what's the best way to self-study mathematics? What is the absolute best way? In this video, I'm not going to tell you Paul Halmos is. If you're wondering, what does studying math have to do with this book? Let me explain. So this book is called A Hilbert Space Problem Book. This is an extremely advanced book. It's got a lot of advanced mathematics, and it has solutions to the problems, full detailed solutions, which are incredible. So let's open up the book and take a look at it. So Paul Halmos was a very famous mathematician. He lived to be, I believe, 90 years old. He passed away in 2006. And not only was Paul an amazing mathematician, he has a lot of really famous quotes. He says a lot of stuff that I think really inspires people to learn math. You know, I don't want to go on a, too much of a tangent because I want to show you what the best way to self-study is. But let me just say this. One of, one of Paul's best quotes, in my opinion, was that when he wanted to learn mathematics, what he would do is he would gather as many problems as he could. So if you want to learn a new subject, say he wants to learn, you know, topic X, Y, Z, I'll just say uh, combinatorics for the purpose of this discussion, which is the theory of counting. He would do as many examples of combinatorics problems, which are counting problems, you know, problems with permutations, problems with combinations, just all kinds of counting arguments, combinatorial proofs that he could learn. And that's, that's the best way to learn. It really is. It really is because you can, you know, read all day, but you have to actually do problems, right? You have to do them. So let me open this up. 1967, a really old book. And here, this is where he tells you the best way to learn mathematics. Let's, we're not going to read the whole preface, but I'm just going to read the first page and a little paragraph on the second page, because the rest of it's talking about the book and how, you know, it's a hard book and he just uses things without, you know, without really reviewing them because it's an advanced mathematics book. This is interesting. The only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. That, there, there he says it again. That tenet is the foundation of the do-it-yourself Socratic or Texas method, the method in which the teacher plays the role of an omniscient but largely uncommunicative referee between the learner and the facts. We're talking about self-study here, so pretend there is no teacher. Although that method is usually and perhaps necessarily oral, this book tries to use the same method to give a written exposition of certain topics in Hilbert Space Theory. The right way to read mathematics is first to read the definitions of the concepts and the statements of the theorems, and then putting the book aside to try to discover the appropriate proofs. If the theorems are not trivial, the attempt might fail. It gets better, but it is likely to be instructive just the same. To the passive reader, a routine computation and a miracle of ingenuity come with equal ease, and later, when he must depend on himself, he will find that they went as easily as they came. The active reader, who has found out what does not work, is in a much better position to understand the reason for the success of the author's method, and later to find answers that are not in books. The book is written for the active reader, and here, this is, it talks a little bit about, about what's in the book, but it's useful. The, part, the first part consists of problems, frequently preceded by definitions and motivation, and sometimes followed by correlates and historical remarks. Most of the problems are statements to be proved, but some are questions, is it, what is, and some are challenges, construct, determine. The second part, a very short one, consists of hints. A hint is a word or a paragraph usually intended to help the reader find a solution. The hint itself is not necessarily a condensed solution of the problem. Okay. It just kind of points you in the right direction. And here, here, let's go to the last paragraph. The problems are intended to be challenges to thought, not legal technicalities. A reader who offers solutions in the strict sense only will miss a lot of the, a lot of the point, and he will miss a lot of the fun. Do not just answer the question, but try to think of related questions and generalizations. Right. So you really have to think about what you're doing. And unfortunately, that's not, that's not you know, an easy answer. Easy answer. This is useful here. This last paragraph. This is really good. If you cannot solve a problem and the hint did not help, the best thing to do at first is to go on to another problem. And I always tell people this because people always ask, you know, how long should you spend on a problem? That that's a whole other question. I would say, how long can you afford? If the problem was a statement, do not hesitate to use it later. Its use or possible misuse may throw a valuable light on the solution. If on the other hand, you solve the problem. 
Look at the hint and then the solution anyway. You may find modifications, generalizations, and specializations that you did not think of. The solution may introduce some standard nomenclature, discuss some of the history of the subject, and mention some pertinent references. I think the biggest thing you should take away from this discussion is that if you get stuck on a problem and you've put in what you consider to be a decent amount of effort, you should move on, right? You should move on because as Paul says, and he doesn't say it in this book, but he says the best way to learn mathematics is by, by doing a ton of problems, right? So, I mean, this is a problem book. This is a problem book. Yeah. And you see he has problems and he has solutions. Let me just briefly show you the contents. It's really, really advanced. Really advanced. I've had this book for a while. I just haven't talked about it. Vectors and Spaces, Weak Topology, Analytic Functions. I have a lot of books I haven't talked about. This one has the dust jacket, which is really nice. Infinite Matrices, Boundedness and Invertibility, Multiplication Operators, Operator Matrices, Properties of Spectra, Examples of spectra, spectral radius. There's some more, more topics here. Norm topology, strong and weak topologies, partial isometries, unilateral shift, compact operators. And see, it has a problem, a hint, a solution. So it's a really nice, really nice book. If, if this is something you're interested in, right? Again, and you have to know a lot of mathematics. I didn't uh, want to bore you with the rest of the preface, but he talks about the requirements and you basically just have to know a ton of mathematics. This is definitely not uh, a beginner book. No. The objects of chief interest in the study of a Hilbert space are not the vectors in the space, but the operators on it. Most people who say they study the theory of Hilbert spaces in fact study operator theory. The reason is that the algebra and geometry of vectors, linear functionals, quadratic forms, subspaces, and the like are easier than operator theory and are pretty well worked out. Some of these easy and known things are useful and some are amusing. Perhaps some are both. Yeah. Paul Halmos is wonderful, wonderful, was a wonderful man. Um, he also has a book on uh, linear algebra. It's called Finite Dimensional Vector Spaces. That's another uh, really famous book uh, by Paul Halmos. And another one, um, he has a measure theory book. I have that as well. That's a, a graduate level book. And he has another book. It's called Naive Set Theory which uh, is uh, for beginners. And I'll, I'll try to leave links in the description if I remember um, to all of Paul's books because I don't know if I'll be able to find this one. And I, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like an unusual book for someone to um, to purchase unless you know a lot of mathematics, right? Because you just, you just have to know a lot uh, to jump into this. You have to know, you know what a Hilbert space is. And you can't just like say, oh, I want to learn about Hilbert spaces. Let me buy this book. It won't, it won't work. <laughs> so... Um, it has a dust jacket. Let me just take it off so you can see. Yeah, very nice, right? Very nice book. Hilbert Space Problem Book, Halmos. Yeah, beautiful. Anyways, just wanted to show you this book. And yeah, that's the best way to learn mathematics and self-study. So Paul's advice, there you have it, uh, from the words of a legend. Until next time, good luck.